welcome. Happy Friday, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. Our toll free number 800 951 The website at allamericangold.com. All kinds of mo- moving and shaking, rocking and firing. What a week. What a what a year uh, it is shaping up to be. Uh, I I don't know which way to turn, which way to start. Uh, I've gotten to the point now where I tr- – and I, and I just believe this, and, and I think a lot of you fall into this. Nobody, if it had been a Democrat, that did the spending bill, the three hundred billion dollar. You would have lost your mind because it's that's devastating. And you know, forget about the children and the grandchildren. That's a myth. Dude, that's us. If you're still alive, you're part of it. <laughs> Maybe if you're like over the age of eighty, you're going to be ah, so you know. But anybody that if you're not at least that old, yeah. Your your part. You are the children and the grandchildren. Make no mistake about it. And then I hear about a gas tax and an internet tax, and I'm like, here it comes, right? And we we've entered into this this world where a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, you who know better. I'll, I'll take uh, Mick Mulvaney. The, the budget director who said, you know what, if I was still in, there's no way I would have approved that. But I'm the budget director now, so it's all good. Right? And I feel like a lot of them, it has been, it is, I, I don't even know how to say it. I don't have strong enough words for what it is they're really doing. And, and you can see it in the dollar, right? You can see it in gold. And what you're seeing, and it's very, very simple, because a lot of people out there are still scratching their heads. How can we have rising rates and a falling dollar? That's not the playbook. That's not what the history books say. Right? Well, you can think about all the things that aren't the playbook anymore. Right? Unemployment rate of 4%. All of us should be uh, making 15 20 25 $30 an hour, right? Because that's what's most happening. It's not. Right, all the playbooks have been thrown out the window because they've simply mispriced the debt. And really, what we have now are rates are rising and the dollar is falling because of debt. And and when you think about some of the, the not only the legislation that's already too late, right? There's nothing we can do now. Right, they're going to, you know, they say trillion dollar deficits on TV. I've been hearing that a lot. It's way more than a trillion. I would be, I would be like, if it was only a trillion, I'd be like, okay, well, it's still horrendous. But you know, I, I'm, I, I know that I only went to public school and I used my fingers and my toes. I think we'll be lucky. And this would be the good number, which is the only number they spew on TV, if we stay below $1.2 trillion this year. I could easily see one four, one five. Now, Now they're talking about, and they still have all this stuff they want to do, right? They, the DACA thing, if that happens, right, they want money for border security, the infrastructure stuff. They want money for that. They want money for this and money for all this other stuff. And and now they've got a new plan. We're going to start taking it from the consumer. Uh, we're going to talk about the gas tax, uh, 25 cents a gallon increase. Because right now the government collects, when you pay, when you pump gas, you pay 18, I think it's 18 and a half cents of the price goes to the federal government, right? That used to be the highway funding. And obviously, that wasn't enough. They want to add 25 more cents. Now, I, I, originally, when I first heard it, I thought they were going to go to 25, you know, from 18 and a half cents to 25 cents. No, no. They want to add an additional 
25 cents a gallon tax. Could you imagine? Right, for most people, whatever you saved on the quote unquote great tax cuts, yeah, you just lost it. If that happened, I don't, I'm not saying that it will or it won't, but I have no reason to doubt him. Everything he says, he does. The funny part is, is how many people who, if it had been a Democrat, would have been, uh, would have been losing their mind at the recklessness. But remember what we've been saying here, and we've been saying it forever. It didn't matter, Democrat or Republican, it didn't matter. They both want to spend a bunch of money we don't have. But the rest of the world, it's starting to matter, and that's really what's important. right? And we saw, listen, you're just seeing a little taste of what's going to happen. Right, whether it be the Bitcoin fantasy land, uh, the fantasy land in the stock market, and all of that stuff, uh, the the easy money you made it. If you were invested last year, congratulations, right? If if you hadn't been invested, you think you're jumping in now and you're going to kill it? Not going to happen. And now what we're seeing is the entire rest of the world saying that. Nah, not interested. I've got a big update on China today. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, they Remember, they've been slowly getting to this point. La- what was it earlier this week? We told you how they already named the clearinghouse. J.P. Morgan will be the U.S. clearinghouse uh, for futures contracts traded in the Japanese currency. I've got a huge update today on exactly when that is going to take place. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, the the other thing we're going to talk about is debt. Who's buying and who's not? Take your radio news hour. Don't touch that dial. Oh, thank God it's Friday. Boy, I tell you what, what a what a crazy, crazy world. And I, and I don't know why today's the day. It's just all in my mind. And maybe because you know my my wife and kids are gone. Right? They're they're in Chicago. Uh, my son is is uh, getting ready to sign to play football and go to college. My oldest son, my younger son, the freshman, right, was in the math decathlon state thingy for his school. By the way, I, not that this has anything to do with the show, hilarious. So he gets home from school yesterday. And, you know, I, I, I get and, and I get there and I'm like, hey, how did it go? You know, how was it? It sucked, Dad. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, why? Well, there, there was everybody there. He goes, there was freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, you know, and I was one of the couple of the freshmen. He goes, and half of the math I, I haven't even learned how to do yet. You know, there was a lot of calculus in there, and I'm not there. And I'm like, and I just started laughing. I'm like, but the whole idea is to get you there, right? You know, by the time you're the senior, you're going to be the guy. You know, that, that's that's what you should want. It's supposed to uh, challenge you and want to be able to know how to do all that stuff. It's just kind of funny. That sucked, Dad. And then after we talked about it for a little while, I hope it made sense because I hope he keeps doing it. Uh, the, uh, I think that would be wonderful. But anyway... I got sidetracked. So I'm, I've been watching, and I, I'll be, they were gone. They flew out last night, and, and I've been watching more TV than I should. And I'm watching, you know, the Asian markets, and I'm watching the the European markets and the U.S. markets, and I'm listening to the to the people that, like I said, if it had been uh, the Barack Obama and the Democrats, They'd be out there railing about, all of these companies are doing are buying back their own stock. You know, Cisco. <laughs> I think it's one of the articles on our website today. The, all, that's all they're doing, right? They're bringing all they're going to buy billions more of their stock. And I've been telling you over the last week and a half how uh, record stock buybacks. And they don't, you know, they talk about, oh, everybody's getting a thousand dollars. No, they're not. I didn't get a thousand dollars. Arlene didn't get a thousand dollars. Wendy didn't get a thousand dollars. Homer didn't. Cliff didn't. And most of ninety nine percent of the people I know didn't get a thousand dollars. 
I actually know one guy who did. My buddy Todd, he he did. Of course, he's been at the company for like 28 years that he was at, but I, and I won't say who it was, but he I know one guy. 99% of the people listening to the show didn't get $1,000. And, but they act like it's great just because it's a Republican and, and instead of a Democrat. And, and, and I know a lot of people, you're investing the same way. You know that that was ridiculous. Right? We allowed all of these corporations to get global and, and fire American workers, and now we're giving them this tax cut and they tell you, like, they're going to bring them to back. They're not bringing those jobs back. They're not coming back. Right? Because, you know, what we needed to do was what? Right? Tariffs and all that. And they'll do a few here or there. But even the steel, that's not going to create steel jobs. Even and, and, and that's if they do them. They're not coming back. Remember what I told you? Mexico pays $2. <laughs> right? We could have them pay zero tax, and they still wouldn't bring them back. And then I think about how now they're talking about a gasoline tax, right? Because now they, they don't think they can spend any more money without some offsets now. They they took a deficit that was $666 billion and turned it into $1.2 trillion. That's what they've done so far. And now they're talking about raising gasoline prices by 25 cents a gallon. I hope it doesn't happen. Now they're talking about, I don't know if you heard the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin on TV again today. Every time this guy talks now, apparently i got to start paying attention to him. Because that's really all we start really need to know. Three weeks ago we talked about the dollar's got to get weaker. We, we don't care about it anymore. Ever since the gold has under stock rally and since then. Today he came out and said, oh, let me tell you, I've talked to the president. We're going to start taxing the Internet, too. <laughs> Which, let's face it, you know what, I, I, it, it all along, it, it really was funny how you could, you know, allow for a company, if they sell it online, not to charge tax and then, you know, put other companies out of business because well, why would you pay seven percent or eight percent? It depends on what state you live in. Imagine if that comes down now between the gas tax and the internet tax. <laughs> you didn't get a tax cut, <laughs> but you know, hey, who's counting? But again, even that doesn't matter, right? Go ahead. You want to go ahead and buy your big? Do it. Buy your big. Coin, buy your stock market. See how see how that works out for you. Because while we're all focused on on trying to cheerlead who we think the winning team is, right? We for those of you, if you're a Democrat, all you care about are Democrats. If you're a Republican, all you care about are Republicans. Instead of you know, when will anybody start paying attention about America, right? And get rid of well, should we even have Democrats or Republicans? I never understood that either, right? The, the uh, why can't somebody have a little? You would think, and I think most Americans have a little bit of both. I think, you know, there's things that are important and less important, and then I, I just don't get it. But again, it's all about money, right? Of course, now because you got to be a you got to be a billionaire to even think about uh, running for office. But here's what's really going on. And when we get it down to the basics, and they're not going to say it like this. They're definitely not going to. They don't want you to know. Hey, this is the end. Right? You go back throughout history. Right? Go all the way back to, like, the Roman Empire. Right? Why did the Roman Empire go away? <laughs> they were dominating. Right, and, and the answer was simple: debt. All of the great world economies and superpowers—they all could die the same way. You know, we, we talk about like the denarius, right? The Roman coins, and how they used to clip them, 
and and eventually people got wise to what was going on and something that was one denarius was now two denarius and and all of these things and and I don't want to go all the way back and explain it all to people if you don't know your history of course you should know it but they never teach it that way right it's kind of like whether it's the Romans or whether it was the Boston Tea Party, right? They they never actually teach you what really happened. And instead, they, they you know, taxation without representation and all this other, all oh, the Roman, they just got too big or whatever, maybe. Nonsense. People stopped wanting the money just that simple and this is exactly what is happening right now why would rates rise and the dollar fall right it's the biggest conundrum out there oh and i love watching these guys on tv act all shocked remember i've been telling you all along what is exactly going to happen almost to the teeth For over a year now, I've been telling you, rates are going to go up, and gold is going to go with it, and the dollar is going to go the other way. How many times did I tell you, I hope they raise rates because gold's going to run? That's exactly what's happening. The start of trading. Open to foreigners. <laughs> Will mark the end of years and really decades in China's attempt to become the new world reserve currency. It's coming. After decades of the of the dollar controlled world the biggest oil buyer is finally getting its own crude oil future contract, hereby known as the Petro One. And it's not stopping there. According to the Chinese government now, we have the official date. Brent and West Texas Intermediate Crude China will list local currency future, crude future contracts in Shanghai on March 26th, according to the National Securities Regulator. It's official. Some of the details on the contract, such as the size, uh, there will be 1,000 barrel contracts and the grades. And remember, there's a lot of different crude grades, right? And, and how sweet or sour the crude is. And they've got all the list of the different grades of crude have already been released. The information like the de- delivery deposits for the crude are going to be announced. In other words, okay, I, I bought the contract. I actually bought it because I need it. I need delivery. They're going to announce uh, where the crude will, you know, where that will pick it up, if you will. Bloomberg is now reporting uh, China surpassed the U.S. as the world's biggest oil importer last year. At the time, they are buying 8.43 million barrels of oil a day. That is now, I think, out of date. I think they're over 9 million barrels a day now. The nation has been hoarding millions of barrels in its strategic oil reserve. The ability for foreign producers and consumers to price hedge contracts on the domestic Chinese commodity exchange using the Chinese currency is a game changer. The Chinese commodity futures markets are a deep pool of liquidity that international traders 
have been clamoring for access for for years. And now it's coming to fruition. Uh, the futures contracts, the trading volumes will get, need to be active. The WAN internationalization has started. It fits the mission. Again, this is Bloomberg. With more and more oil-producing countries moving away from dollar-linked oil contracts. Do you think that's stopping there, do you? Do you really think so? Why do you think it's happening? You think all of a sudden, I don't you know, I don't know, let, let's start, start trading contracts in, in, in our own currency. You think that's how it's happening? think they're operating in some vacuum right this is this is the changing of the guard whether you want to admit it or not that's up to you you can cheerlead us spending into oblivion if you want to but it me, you are not going to like it and you can pretend that you do But the rest of the world is taking notice, and guess what? They're doing something about it. China wants to take over the pricing of the oil market, and it's not going to stop there. Because most importantly, what they want is the money. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, the conservative pro-family broadcast of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a leading voice for the sanctity of life, traditional education, the Constitution, and American sovereignty. Now, from the Phyllis Schlafly Center Studios, here's Ryan Haidt. New Year's Day rang in the sale of pot in retail stores in California. Anyone over the age of 21 may now smoke pot on private property in the state. This push for pot is not really coming from the freedom-loving culture of rock music. Instead, like gambling, legalizing pot is driven by a multi-decade campaign of investors seeking to profit from cannabis as it's now being advertised for marketing purposes. First, it was sold to the American people under the guise of medical marijuana, and predictably anyone with a little back or joint pain was obtaining prescriptions to get high. The strategy was to open the door to the inevitable recreational use by anyone, which is now occurring in eight states. This is too much even for rock fans, as California's popular Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival recently responded to the legalization of marijuana by banning it at its concerts. If concerts won't allow smoking pot, why do the rest of us have to put up with its pungent odor and harmful consequences? Costly emergency room visits by potheads and deadly car accidents are just two of the burdens that rampant marijuana addiction brings to our society. Among traffic fatalities in Colorado when operators were tested for marijuana, 25% of those crashes had an operator who tested positive for the drug. This is a sharp increase since marijuana was legalized there, and the real number may be higher because, unlike alcohol, there is no close correlation between impairment and tissue levels. Although supposedly limited to adults, marijuana use by youths between 12 and 17 years old and college-age adults between 18 and 25 has risen sharply in Colorado since pot was legalized there just four years ago. Now Colorado has the highest rate of marijuana use by youths in the country, according to the Rocky Mountain High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area. Meanwhile, the town of Pueblo, Colorado, is buckling under the expense of marijuana migrants, attracted to the town's pro-marijuana publicity. Instead of finding real work, however, most of these marijuana migrants live in boxes, resorting to buckets as toilets. Thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. You'll be glad to know the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly continues, upheld by Ed Martin, president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Chairman Helen Marie Taylor, Treasurer John Schlafly, a full staff in St. Louis in our nation's capital, and thousands of citizen volunteers, her Eagles, across the country. You can be part of that legacy at phyllisschlafly.com. That's phyllisschlafly.com. Welcome back, Patriot Radio News Hour eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. You better get your financial house in order. And remember, why is it that you have gold and silver? It's simple. It really is. 
And this is part of why I think uh, a lot of people on Wall Street hate it so much. Because they want you to believe things are complicated. Right? And most of us are not smart enough, I'm definitely not, to, to pick stocks, right? And what stocks to buy and what stocks, I have no idea. Right? And they, 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 they want it to be complicated. They want the value of the dollar to be complicated. They want to act like getting legislation passed is complicated, right? And everything's just so hard. And most people, when things get hard, kind of like my youngest son, it was hard. I didn't know how to do half the stuff. So therefore, his first reaction is, yeah, I don't want to do that. I'm like, no, that's the wrong reaction. No, you want to figure out, right, in the, the quest for knowledge. And you need to understand what really is at work right now. And you're not going to get it from your stock. Or these guys don't even know. You know what? Most people that are handling your money have never been in a raise, rising rate environment. They don't understand it. Because even for them, oh, that's too complicated. I don't want to. You know, I don't want to deal with that. My company, my company selling this ETF. That's all I care about. And you start really looking at what's happening and why we've always called it wealth insurance. Right? You're taking some of the money that you worked hard for. But think about it, the money now that they want you to pay a gasoline tax and an internet tax, right? Now we're getting all the tax stuff. Right? And even the even this little uh tax package that they pass. You know in twenty twenty one you gotta give it all back. I, I don't even know if you would know that or not, but yeah. See, we got laws that they wrote. See, Congress actually wrote themselves some laws because they, even Congress, knew we really can't trust ourselves because at the end of the day, we truly are scumbags. They wrote a law that said any tax cut has to pay for itself. And if it doesn't pay for itself, I forget, after like five years, you got to give it back. You got to take it back. Somehow, I don't know how it all works. The only piece of the tax bill that got it will have to go back is the stuff we got. Somehow, the business they wrote some waiver that not except for business, so they can stay down at that lower rate. But all the rest of it, it goes back. It's not paying for itself. But who cares about it? that's just a detail? Yeah, you know, I don't want to think about that, right? I want to think about how great it is because the Republicans and there it doesn't matter. You know this legislation that it's crazy, right? And now we've gotten an official launch date. We've got the size of the contracts. We've got the types of crew that are going to be in the contracts. At the same time, you think it's coincidence. I'm just asking. Maybe it is, right? Maybe you believe in that stuff. That's just a coincidence. That as we're ramping up the sales of our debt, foreigners aren't showing up. And, oh, wait. In another, what, six weeks, we're going to be able to buy uh, oil contracts in Renimbi and, and Chinese yuan. You think that goes together? Just asking you. You think maybe they're like, eh, you know, I'm going to save a little bit here, and 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 I'm going to use some money, and I'm going to buy some Chinese bonds, so I can start buying some of these oil contracts. And six months from now, maybe it'll be steel. You know, you think about it, because one of the things they, they keep mentioning, well, China's the largest oil importer in the world. Now, they're the largest steel importer. They're the largest. They're about the largest importer of just about every commodity in the world, aren't they? 
So it only stand to reason that what? Yeah, we're going to pretty much do it in all of them. We're starting here. And as they increase the offerings, countries need to have the ability to buy debt because this is how they do it. These countries don't leave the money in the bank. This is this is the other thing I want to explain to you, right? These mega corporations, they don't Apple doesn't have you know, I don't even know what their number three hundred and fifty billion dollars sitting in a bank account. <laughs> just like the FDIC, you only get two hundred and fifty grand if that was even you know, if that was you know, the money was actually there. But either way, they don't do that. No, they buy bonds. All short dated stuff. And this is how the United States has been able to be in a debt bubble for as long as we have. I mean, really, when you think about it, how did we, how were we able to get away with it? You go all the way back. I mean, that was the great, the, maybe the greatest thing to come out of World War II was Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods uh, just ended, didn't end that long ago. And now we're starting to see all of the, the, I'd call it a race, call it what you'd like. But you're going to start seeing all of these countries saying, you know what, I need some of that money. i got to buy some of this Chinese debt because, you know, I'm, I I owe them money. Right? <laughs> right? Think about it. China is an exporter to the world. Right? And And also... They're a huge importer of commodities. So, you know, could you see the conversations, how they would be going with the the Saudis and the Russians and the Australians? Hey, uh, you want us to keep buying all your stuff, right? Well, then uh, step up and start buying some of our debt. Right? Cause what does China like to do? Well, you, China likes debt, too, don't they? Right? They've got to sell it as well. And then... They got. They start looking around. They start looking at their portfolio. And they start saying, "Well, let's see here. What do I got here? What do I got the most of? Man, I got a lot of these dollars. A lot of these bonds. You know what? The dollar it keeps falling. I mean, I got I got a two percent return, and the dollar fell ten percent last year." Looks like it's going to fall another 10% this year. Hmm. Pretty easy decision on what one I'm going to sell. Take the radio news hour. We'll be back right after the break. I promise you I did not see this until just right now. This this will help exp- hopefully shed some light on what I'm talking about. Apple is on its track for the best week in more than a year. And I, granted, all the stocks are, right? They're kind of having a bounce back from the, the big pullback. It's a screaming sell here, Larry McDonald said. The one major issue, it's billions and billions and billions of dollars in bonds that will be an albatross around its neck as interest rates rise. Keep in mind, Apple has one of the largest bond portfolios on planet Earth. (laughs) Apple's bond portfolio is bigger than most mutual funds, right? So this goes to the point where, you know, I was telling you, right, they don't sit and hold this money in cash. They don't do that. And, and you just, you know, when you, you start to think about, again, going back to why it is that you own gold and silver, it's a hedge. Right? What are you hedging against? Well, for us here in the United States, we hedge against the dollar. Everything else is just noise. And when you see a government that was already spending ungodly amounts of money that it didn't have and doubles down. When you think about the last 10 years, the, they, they mispriced the debt markets, and when they mispriced it, they doubled the size. 
Now they're gonna they're they're being forced. Because let's face it, it's being forced on them. They're being forced to pay higher rates at the same time the amount of debt is doubling again. She worked okay the other way. Yeah, we can double it when we're not paying more. We're paying way less. Right? We got away with it. Hey, we paid way, way less, but we didn't blow out the budget deficit because the interest we were paying was falling. Now it's going the other way. And so when you think about whether, where you should be putting your money right now, it's pretty simple. Right? You're hedging positions for what you know is coming. It needs to start increasing. It just does. Because the size of the problem, right? It's just like we've said. Now, granted, we, we don't, right? There, there's always periods where they pretended like they fixed stuff. And we've seen it. Nobody, I know I go back to NAFTA and get. Remember how long they pretended like that was great? <laughs> right. How many of you wish we could go back and not do that stuff? Right? How many people would would raise their hand and say, yes, you know what? I wish we didn't allow these corporations to get rid of us. And you think about all the ladies, right? How many of us wish we could go back and change how we spent all of this money, right? And all the from prescription drugs to Obamacare to, to now what the what the Trump administration's doing, which is, hey, let's just the heck with it. And everybody out there, the same people that were screaming from the rooftops when the Democrats were spending all the money are now sitting there and trying to get you to believe that somehow it's okay because the Republicans are the ones spending it this time. <laughs> and you know what? Chinese don't care. They don't care. They don't care if it's Obama or Trump that spent it. They've got their own stuff to sell. And you got to understand who it is they're going to take it from. And so as we watch all of this stuff happen, now they're talking about a 25 cent gas, an increase of 25 cents to the gasoline tax. Talking about the internet sales tax. Listen, you're, that's all we're going to hear now. The tax cut stuff, that's all done now. Right? It's gone. It's over. All as you're going to hear from here on out about any single dollar that's going to be spent is a tax increase of some sort is coming. Does it matter what where, in what form or shape that it takes? Of course not. And the realities are all of the debt that needs to be sold, there's just not enough people that want to buy it. At the same time, now now we got like a triple win, right? For, it was bad enough that we got to sell all this debt, and the Federal Reserve is like, hey, we want to get rid of all the debt we bought, <laughs> right? We bought $4 trillion worth of this stuff, and we need to start getting rid of it because as the interest rate tries, by the way, don't be fooled. Those turn into losers, too. The albatross that's around Apple's neck, Think how big the albatross on the Federal Reserve's neck is. Now they want to sell. Right? And so now that's even more debt that we've got to pawn off on somebody, lay off on somebody. Right? So now that's right, really now I got another four to six hundred billion on top of what I'm already doing? And now, now we've got to compete with the Chinese. The Chinese want to start using their own currency. So now other countries are going to be like, well, you know, I've got a choice here. I don't actually have to buy any more of your debt if I don't want. I can, at least starting with crude oil, I can start doing it and buy Chinese debt.
That's a long fall for the dollar. Final segment on a Friday. Final segment, Patriot Radio News Hour. Gold's up two and a half, 1354 and change. Silver, 1675. U.S. Silver Eagle still at, at $400 for the roll today. Uh, on the gold side, U.S. $5 liberties, and they're starting to move here, and, and we've been talking about this, uh, 375 on U.S. $5 Liberty gold pieces. Uh, those are the quarter ounce. The older ones, uh, $375. Put them away. Understand what's happening, what it is, that why you buy gold, why you buy silver, to hedge against the dollar. And right now we've got this this terrible storm and really, you know, self-inflicted. Right? We we're we're in the blow up the debt mode. At the same time, the Federal Reserve is trying to unload its debt. At the same time, the Chinese are now coming to the forefront to say, "Hey, we've got a new alternative for you." All of you countries, all of your you companies that make billions of dollars and you need to, to have it in some form of bond, we're going to give you a new alternative. And this is going to be, you know, don't, I don't want to overstate it, right? They're, just, they're starting with the biggest market, crude oil. But just understand, that's the starting point. Now we've got it official, right? Now it's official. We know the, the, the launch date. We know the size of the contracts. We know all the different grades of crude oil that are going to be sold. And so you start thinking about what the dollar is doing, and all of a sudden it makes perfect sense. And in order to keep as many people as possible to buy our debt, Despite, right, well, you go to do the China thing, you got the Federal Reserve, the central bank thing happening, right? We got to pay a higher rate of return. We got to pay more interest because the dollar keeps falling. And these people are like, wait a minute, I'm buying these bonds, I'm getting killed. Right? I, I, you need to do better. You think 3% is going to be enough? No, no chance. You know, when, you know, they talk about a 10-year note that could be as high as 4% this year. So? Now listen, that's not great. But let me tell you, by any means, that's not good news. But so? Here's about 4%. What happens at 6 7 8%? Right? Let me tell you what happens, how big the problem gets. It, you can't even, it, 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 it's so hard for people to understand that they just as soon not think about it. And I'm telling you right now, you better start thinking about it. And, and you know, whether it's going to be, I have no idea what they're going to do to Social Security and Medicare and taxes and all. I mean, it's going to be bad. I don't know. I, there's no way around it. Because, you you know, forget about trillion-dollar debt. We've done it now, right? We've already we've already succumbed and, and, and given up. I can tell by everyone talking about it. Forget about trillion dollars. Forget about even two, because we're almost really to two. That was when the debts are three, four, and five trillion a year. Patriot Radio News Hour, 800 951 uh, Enjoy the weekend. We listen, this show will replay Monday. Uh, we're closed for President's Day. I forgot to say that. We'll be back on Tuesday. 